Actually, I do. You know, I think the coronavirus, people have framed it in terms of a test of various systems, whether it's public health, emergency response, uh, even political systems. People compare the benefits of an authoritarian system like China versus, you know, democracies in Europe and the West that seem relatively slow to respond or, you know, models like Singapore, which combine a bit of authoritarianism with, with democracy or uh, free markets. And I think historically, democracies are not asked to respond to things. You know, if you look at, in the, in the United States, like if you look at its history, has typically been slow to respond to international crises, whether it's World War I, World War II, things often happen outside of the U.S. shores that, you know, the U.S. takes its sweet time in kind of responding to and gearing up. I think one of the strengths of the U.S. historically has been that once it responds and starts to respond, the decentralized nature of things allows for a lot of innovation and ingenuity in the responses that people have. Individual adaptations that people have are able to become much larger and scale much faster than places where it's authoritarian and it's run from a centralized model, right? And so I think right now, people want to kind of cast their vote sort of right now, and it's still very early on. You know, I saw something today that said, COVID and coronavirus might become a seasonal thing until there's a vaccine, like it might happen every year. It might be a seasonal thing, right? Yeah. Which if you think about that and you think about, you know, if this goes on three, four five years, you know, to me, it's not certain that China or Singapore, or these other countries, three, four years out will have responded to this better than the United States will have, right? I think we're still very early on in the process. They mean to assess.